last but not least, we have four bills. This, is, this one we care about a lot because it has to do with revenue. We have four bills that will improve our ability to collect debt owed to the city. Department of Finance reports that there is $1.6 billion owed to the city as a result of unpaid building, sanitation, and other violations. That money can help the city pay for our parks, our schools, our teachers, our police officers, our firefighters, and so much more. This package of legislation will help us to collect unpaid fines. Intro 806B establishes a temporary amnesty program for people who owe money to the city. The sponsor is Council Member Jalissa Ferreras Copeland. This, <laughs> with her cheering section, this program will give individuals and businesses 90 days to come forward and pay their fines without paying penalties for failure to appear at a hearing. They may owe a fine for failing to clean, clean the sidewalk or for performing construction without a permit. For example, while we are reaching out aggressively, so New Yorkers know that, I'm sorry, we will be reaching out aggressively, so New Yorkers know that they can participate in this program. Now, Intel 807A requires city agencies issuing notices of violation to generic, quote unquote, owners of businesses, premises, or organizations to make reasonable efforts to actually learn the owner's name. Sponsor again is Councilmember Jalissa Ferreras Copeland. It's just common sense that if you issue a notice of violation to a generic owner without naming who it is, chances are it will go unaddressed or unpaid. So this bill requires the agency, if you a generic, generic notice of violation, to make a concerted effort to learn the name of the recipient. This means we'll know who's accountable and who's responsible for taking care of the bill. In the 812A, requires city agencies to issue notice there's a violation involving a building or a lot to include the borough, block, lot number, the building ID number, or device ID number as applicable to sponsors, council member, Ben Kalos. These specifications will also make it easier to collect unpaid penalties. Intel 810A pertains to city agencies that issue notices of violations as well as noted, excuse me, as well as licenses, permits, and registration. It permits these agencies to create rules that allow them to consider unpaid debt when determining whether to deny an application for or suspend or terminate or revoke licenses or permits or registrations. Agencies that, uh, that can already exercise this authority will be exempted from this legislation. The sponsor is Councilmember Ben Cleavis. This bill means that if you don't pay your fines, it may impact your application for a license or registration, or whether you get to keep that license or registration. Together, these four bills will give us important tools to collect money owed to the city, meaning to the people of New York City. I want to thank Speaker Melissa Mark Figueroa, Department of Finance Commissioner Josh Viha, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Oath Commissioner Fidel Delvaya. Cities enforcement agencies, one of the 16 to 24 enforcement agencies, finds that someone allegedly violated a safety law or regulation or a public health law or regulation or a quality of life regulation. They used to a summons or notice of violation that's detainable to one of those subsidiary tribunals, in this case, the Environmental Control Board. And when they go to this tribunal, that tribunal will then, at a hearing officer, will determine whether or not that individual or entity was guilty or not guilty, and if they were found liable, they typically will impose a fine or penalty. It becomes very, very disheartening and frustrating that although most people who are responsible pay their fines and penalties and correct the violations, a lot of people stop at the law and stop at the, at the process. When we came into office, we found that to the extent of one and a half billion dollars worth of these things have occurred over the last 30 years. It's all accumulated, accumulated over that time. Uh, that was unacceptable to this administration and at the direction of Mayor de Brasio, uh, Finance Commissioner, my colleague, uh, um, 
Jahar and uh, his deputy, Mr. Curtis Mister, who is the vehicle of us today, uh, started to work on uh, correcting that problem. And particularly, I'd like to be grateful to the city council who found this also agnostic and inappropriate, particularly Councilman Carlos and, and Councilmember uh, Ferraris Copeland for giving us the tools, giving the city the tools to start at this point a benchmark for correcting these issues. The, the, the piece of legislation right now is the most immediate part will uh, allow people to come forward and get their act together and do the right thing. And if you don't, you will suffer the consequences. It also creates tools to make sure uh, that some of the uh, problems that uh, the Department of Finance has had in finding who owes the city money uh, will be addressed by identifying uh, those stop laws. Uh, you don't get a chance to publicly thank your boss very often, but I'm thanking the mayor right now for uh, uh, not only uh, on behalf of the people in the city of New York for this, but for their those uh, underloved members of the bureaucracy who work so hard to try to uh, make the city safer and, and, and healthier for our citizens and then uh, adjudicate uh, those who, who don't uh, and then feel frustrated when the this becomes scoff laws, walk away and, and ignore their obligations. And this brings real meaning to the law and justice in the city of New York. At the, at the administrative level. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. They're not on lunch. <laughs> we love them. I do. There you go. Thank you. Now I want to introduce the sponsor of two of these bills and the chair of the Creon Finance Council member, Mr. Ferraris Copeland. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, I want to thank Commissioner G and his staff in the Department of Finance for co uh, cooperating with the Council to improve upon this collection effort, and for not only enforcing the judgment collection process, but also giving relief to property owners, many of which are still facing difficult financial circumstances. Last year, in an effort to bring about more transparency in the ECB debt collection process, the Council passed Local Law 11 that required an annual report from the Department of Finance detailing the amount of outstanding ECB judgments. According to that report, published in November of 2015, the city is owed $1.5 billion, as was mentioned by the mayor. Um, seven, what we found was that $386 million is interest, $709 million are owed in penalties, and approximately 75% of the total debt owed is more than two and a half years old. As the council and the mayor go through the city council's budget process, we know that there are far too many programs and agencies that would use an extra billion dollars really well. Mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> this temporary amnesty program is, again, temporary is a win-win for our city for New Yorkers. With ECB judgments, it will encourage New Yorkers to resolve their outstanding ECB debt faster, all while helping them save money and avoid tougher enforcement. We want as many New Yorkers as possible to take advantage of this 90-day amnesty period. So it will be paired with an outreach plan targeting those areas with a high concentration of New Yorkers with ECB judgments. This is a one-time opportunity, and the DO and DOF will not offer such a deep discount once it is over. So please, I encourage anyone with ECB debt to participate in this program. I'd like to thank the Finance Division staff, Kenesha Edward and Rebecca Chasen, for working on this bill for over a year to ensure that it gave the city a strong tool for recuperating this debt while protecting the interests of property owners and New Yorkers. I'd also like to thank my colleague, Councilmember Kalos, for supporting this work from the very beginning and for investing his time and brain power to help improve DOS process. And finally, thank you to Deputy Commissioner Chief Jeff Shear and Assistant Commissioner Samar Karras, who we spend a lot of time discussing those hours, I would say, um, working collaboratively with us to craft this legislation and for developing excellent targeted media campaign that will surely maximize the participation rate of this amnesty program. Again, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just want to say that a year ago today, you performed my wedding. So thank you very much. We're very excited to celebrate our anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. 
finally, uh, sponsor of two of the pieces of legislation in chair of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Council Member Ben Taylor. I guess he's the one you don't even need to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're not judging. Thank you. Every day, council members receive calls, emails, and even tweets about quality of life problems like crash on sidewalks, excessive noise before or after hours, health code violations, and dangerous construction. Until now, a 301 complaint might result in a violation, but those violations are often difficult to collect, leaving the city owed, as has been said, $1.6 billion in outstanding ECB debt. That is, as has been mentioned, $1.6 billion that could be spent on school lunch for our students, facilities for our seniors, and affordable housing for all. We've been working on this quality of life issue since May of 2014 when Council Member Ferris Copeland and I raised the issue at a joint budget hearing of our committees. Following our hearing, Commissioner Jiha's Department of Finance issued a report in June which provided the basis for this legislation. The Council passed Local Law 11 of 2015, sponsored by Council Member Ferreras Copeland and I, which required reporting on quality of life violations. The first report issued in November of 2015 supported the need for further reforms. That report, coupled with monthly reporting on the number and reason for dismissals by Commissioner Del Valle's Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings, OATH, uncovered two main problems. One, violations were missing the information necessary to find out who is responsible, and two, Bad actors with outstanding violations could still do business without correcting mistakes or changing their behavior. Introduction 807A and 812A will help us identify who is responsible. Introduction 807A, sponsored by Council Member Perez Copeland and I, requires the city to make reasonable efforts to find out the person responsible instead of generically writing violations to owner of. Introduction 812A requires agencies to include a unique identifier like the borough block and lot and building identification number on the summons. Introduction 810A requires agencies to consider all outstanding or repeated quality of life violations when renewing or granting licenses or registrations with public reporting on applications reviewed and denied. Moving forward, when New Yorkers complain and a violation is issued, instead of ignoring it or paying it as a cost of doing business, Bad actors and repeat offenders will have to improve their behavior. Passing these bills will not only sorry, signing these bills will not only help the city collect 1.6 billion dollars, but will more importantly change the behaviors that jeopardize public safety and will improve quality of life. These bills happened because of the collaboration of the legislative and finance divisions of the council, the Department of Finance and roundtable meetings with nearly a dozen agencies that issue ECB violations. All parties put in a lot of work to come up with solutions to a long-standing problem, and I think we're making positive changes to quality of life enforcement across the city. I'd like to thank Mayor de Blasio, Speaker Melissa Marcovrito, Council Member Ferris Copeland for their partnership in getting these bills passed, particularly uh, Ferris Copeland for her patience. This has been a long process. Uh, Commissioner Zach Jiha, Deputy Commissioner Jeff Cheer, and Samara Karasik, an Assistant Commissioner from the Department of Finance for their transparency, reporting, and guidance. Commissioner and Chief Administrative Law Judge uh, Fidel Del Valle, and Assistant Commissioner John Castelli from Oath for their unbiased and frank assessment of the hearing process. Charles Adenoff for herding together 11 agencies to come up with real solutions. From the Council's Legislative Division, Matt Gowald, Rachel Cordero, uh, Samita Deshmukh and Wes Jones. From the Council's Finance Division, Tanisha Edwards and Rebecca Chasen. And my Legislative Director, uh, Paul Westrick. Uh, that's the team that made this happen, and hopefully we can all come up for the bill panel. We, we must come up for the bill panel. Okay, we're just going to say a few words in Spanish about all of the bills that we have done today, and then we're going to sign these last bills. Las once leyes que estoy firmando hoy nos ayudan a crear normas de conducta para nuestras plazas peatonales, tener una industria de autos de alquiler más justa para choferes y pasajeros, mejorar nuestra capacidad para cobrar, cobrar duedas y crear un programa de amnistía para deudores elegibles y dar a nuestros contratistas 
la capacidad de rebellar información demográfica sobre los tus líderes y seguimos trabajando cada día por una ciudad de Nueva York más segura, más justa y con más estabilidad financiera. Muchas gracias. All right.